Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Everybody, wow. and thank you for coming. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Okay. My name is Diana Zapata, and I'm a board member for FPA, which stands for Fostering Progressive Advocacy Inc. And um, so, who we are, FPA Foundation. Like I said, it stands for Fostering Progressive Advocacy Inc. Foundation Inc. Sorry. So we were started on 2008 by Doran Matthews and Silver Hooper. They were both impacted by the, sub, the child welfare system. FPA is an advocacy human rights organization for communities of color. We organize communities of color to take action on social justice issues that are impacting the community, their community. FPA Foundation is extending our struggle for reproductive justice to challenge the foster care system because it violates thousands of women's rights to parent their children. Most of the billions of dollars spent by the U.S. child welfare system go to removing children from their homes and maintaining them in foster care. Foster care is also marked by shocking racial disparities. Black children made up two-fifths of the nation's foster care population. Although they represented less than one-fifth of the nation's children, black children were four times as likely as white children to be in foster care. Taken together, children of color comprised only 30% of the general population, but about 60% of children in foster care. Most children awaiting adoption in, nation, in the nation's foster care system are African American or Latino. Researchers have detected differential treatment at every point in the child welfare decision-making process, reporting, investigation, and substantation, child placement, ser sorry, child placement, service provision, and permanency decision-making. For example, black women are much more likely than white women to be reported by the hospital staff for substance abuse during pregnancy and to have their babies removed by Child Protective Services. In the last decade, government policy has intensified its focus on freeing children in foster care for adoption by terminating parental rights rather than preserving families. <coughs> the Adoption and Safe Families Act passed by Congress in 1997 implements a preference for adoption by establishing swifter timetables for states to petition for termination of parental rights and offering financial incentives to states to move more children from foster care into adoptive homes. It also weakens the chances of family preservation by encouraging agencies to make concurrent efforts to place foster children with adoptive parents while trying to reunite them with their families. Federal child welfare Federal child welfare policy places foster children on a fast track to adoption as a strategy for curing the ills of the child welfare system, especially reducing the enormous foster care population. Reproductive justice advocates should work to radically transform the child welfare system into one that generously and non-coercively supports families instead of tearing them apart. The right of families to live together and the right of children to be raised by their parents are at the core of society, yet these rights are routine, routinely violated in the name of children's well-being. Just as disproportionate and discriminatory policing leads to mass incarceration of young men of color, entrenched racism and classism in the child welfare system leads to disproportionate numbers of black and Latino children entering foster care. The discriminatory removal of children from their parents' care and the excessive policing of how poor parents raise their children are pressing issues that demand a response from reproductive justice advocates. Reproductive justice is a framework developed by feminist organization Sister Song in the mid-1990s to expand the mainstream reproductive rights movement's singular focus on the legal right to end a pregnancy. Instead, reproductive justice considers how different power structures like race, class, or immigration status affect a person's ability to determine their own reproductive future. <clears throat> 
Black and brown women must also have the right to raise their children in healthy communities with social and economic support and free from the fear of violence from individuals or the state. People often assume that removal of children from their families occurs only in cases of serious abuse. That is not true. Many allegations against parents are based solely on neglect. Oftentimes, the neglect in these cases is simply the act of raising children while poor. For instance, parents who are unable to afford childcare have found themselves accused of neglect after they're leaving their children on their own for even very brief amount of times, while others are hauled into family court proceedings because they live in an unsafe apartment that are chronically neglected by unresponsive landlords. Removing children from their parents because of poverty solves no problems. Instead, it causes psychological harm to the children and families involved. Rather than, focus, rather than focusing on policing parents, the child welfare system should focus on providing robust social supports for families living in poverty. Achieving reproductive justice requires protecting marginalized communities' right to raise their families in safety and dignity. Parents who had previous involvement in the foster care system and find themselves pregnant face a number of threats to their reproductive autonomy. These women may rightfully worry that if child welfare services find out that they are pregnant, they will try to remove the infant to foster care. This fear can cause women to avoid getting the prenatal services necessary for their health and the health of their unborn child for fear of losing that child to foster care. Blocking women from accessing reproductive health care services for fear of state involvement in their parenting choices is a grave violation of their reproductive autonomy. autonomy sorry. There you go, autonomy, thank you. <laughs> the child welfare system has immense power over families. This power is mostly wielded against low-income families of color. Securing the physical, mental, economical, and spiritual well-being of women, the objective of the reproductive justice system requires changing the child welfare system such that it no longer strips low-income women of color of their right to parent free state, sorry, free from straight state intrusion. So following, we're gonna um, put up some videos for you guys to view. Um, Basically, it's um, pictures of impacted families and parents and their reactions and basically them telling their story. Darn, you want me to turn the button?